What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is Carlo at Magna Crypto. As per usual, this will be an end of week market breakdown. And there are a couple of coins that are looking ready to rocket to the moon, but also a couple that might just sink to the bottom of the ocean. So let's not waste any time and get straight to it. Cue the intro. <laughs> Now, of course, let's start with Bitcoin, the daddy of the market, the leader of the market, the one that influences most of the market. So let's start by looking at the daily because I was asked by one of my members to kind of cover like bearish indicators and, and obviously my opinion on what's going on with Bitcoin, where it's headed. And to be honest, I do think that the worst is behind us. Uh, there is definitely a possibility that I can spike to the bottom, uh, maybe grab some liquidity from below 30,000. That's definitely a possibility. But if that does happen, it will be a quick event just to kind of potentially, potentially shake out um, those that are still kind of on the fence that are thinking, is it going to go further or not? Um, there might still be a move that will shake them out um, and, and make them think, that Bitcoin is going to zero and that will basically allow them to release those funds, sell their coins, and then it will reverse. Oh, there is a possibility of that. I do think that, um, but I do think the worst is behind us for the most part. Now, there is also um, an actual bearish in indicator uh, going by the name of the, of the death, death cross, and that's when the 50 day a moving average goes below the 200 day moving average and that could be happening in the next few weeks next few months uh, and normally when the 50 day EMA which is this line over here goes below the 200 day EMA um, that's the bearish death cross if it if it's the other way around where the 50 day um, goes above the 200 day then that is a golden cross which is of course bullish let me see if I can quite far back so here you can see, let me change the color of the 50 day to red. So you can see once this goes to the um, to the upside, that's a golden cross. Uh, and normally bullish uh, movements happen after that. As you can see, after a few weeks, uh, it started to rally. So there is definitely that possibility of when it crosses below, then we might see some serious downside. But I do think that the momentum is still on the bullish side for this year. So if that happens, probably is gonna be um, a short event. That's my take on it. Uh, also, if we look at the 21 day EMA, one of my favorite EM, 21 day EMA, yes. One of my favorite ones, it's getting close to um, breaking this level, getting above it and potentially retesting it. And if that happens, I think that's definitely uh, a bullish case. As you can see, uh, when Bitcoin is above the 21 day EMA, uh, Bitcoin rallies. So let's kind of track back a little bit. Uh, it's been above it for, for a long time. So you can see here, uh, this is 2019. Every time it's below, uh, it tends to drop. When it's above, it tends to go up. Uh, every time it dips below, again, as I said, there's gonna be a big dip, but um, every time it gets back above, it starts to rally and when it really um, confirms uh, and makes the 21 day su uh, EMA support, then, you know, as you can see here, it turned it into support, then it rockets and it keeps going up and up and only dips below for a short period before going up. So I think if we get b above that 21 day EMA, which could happen soon, it's, it's touching it, it's pushing to get past there, then um, we're off those races. <laughs> Uh, and in terms of kind of support levels at the moment, it's ranging between, uh, let's go back to the weekly. It's ranging between the 32,000 level support and the 38,000 level resistance. So it's just in, in the middle of, of that. Uh, and there's a support line and that's keeping it above. So once it gets above this level, um, that's for me going to be a confirmation of kind of the bulls taking full control. At the moment, it's just kind of in between those two levels. If it actually goes below 32 and closes for the week, that's going to be a huge, huge bearish indication for me as well. 
Um, but for the, for the moment, as long as it's in between these levels, I think we're safe. It's probably going to continue um, to the upside. So that's my take on Bitcoin. As long as it stays between these two levels, um, we are, we're good. We're safe. No need to worry. And you can see all, also, even though it's, it's wicking like crazy, it's trending to the upside as well. So that's another positive thing to note. Now, Ethereum is showing some good signs. We have a nice high being created right here at 2600 and a nice low at 2100. So what we need to see now, this is this is going to be the range. Uh, and of course, we need to see it break above this level for it to go into back onto bullish momentum. Uh, and this, again, this is why I like this kind of structure. It's very clear when the bulls are in control and when the bears are in control. So if it dips below this level, then of course that's going to be bearish indication. Uh, then there's there's a last level of defense at 1900. So as long as it's same with Bitcoin, as long as it stays between these two ranges, uh, at the moment it's at the midpoint. As long as it stays between these two ranges and start to move in the upwards direction, that is going to be uh, a bullish indication and an indication that we're still safe. It's arranging, consolidating. Um, so this is a good thing. So just be patient and wait for the move to the upside. Next, we're going to move to the smaller coins. Link, chain link, chain link. Chain link has tested, well, this low over here, which is quite important. What we want to see now is for it to turn around and make a higher low. Uh, that's going to be a bullish indication. If it dips, dips below this level, then it's going to move into this major level uh, of resistance, which would turn into support. If that doesn't hold, then that's going to be quite bearish. So we want to make sure that it holds this level uh, and builds um, and it builds to move to the upside. The next thing as well you can notice is this trend line. Uh, although it's tapped a few wicks and not candles, it's still a trend line um, that we can we can use. So if it doesn't hold, if this this level doesn't hold, then that will be the next level of support that we want to see uh, it use as support to move to the upside. So it's still basically um, confirming the bottom. Uh, then again. To repeat, the major thing that we want to see is uh, a higher low being created and that would confirm that it's looking to move to the upside. Litecoin as well, it's tested a major support level um, around 130-940 and use that as support. You can see it's tapped that, uh, dipped into that and like Chainlink, it's looking like it wants to create a higher low. Um, of course, we need to see that turn around and move to the upside. Um, but so far, uh, it's it's going through the steps of a reversal and it's looking like this is the bottom. Now, same with Chainlink, that doesn't mean that it's, it's the reversal is done and it's going to go move to the upside, but it's looking good for the moment. There is some resistance above with the 21-day EMA, um, but again, uh, there's also a, an actual range. We've got the this level around 140 and then we've got the level up top around 220, which is just shy of the wick. So we want to see it hold this level. If it does, then it can build and move to the upside. Um, targets are going to be 220. Um, so unless there's another kind of negative event that pushes everything down, so far it's looking good. It's looking good. You can see it, it dipped into support and it's, it's still above it. It dipped and pushed up, so that's a good sign. Uh, again, we just need to see it build and move to the upside. So, so far, so good. Unless there's another negative event or Bitcoin um, kind of drops, which would pull the market down. Next, we will look at Polkadot. Um, so, similar thing, Polkadot and uh, Ethereum. We've got a clear high and a clear low. Um, at the moment, it is it dropped below the midpoint, which is not good. Um, but it's finding some support. Uh, at a wick resistance level around 19 to, to 20 dollars 20 dollars is also a very very key um round number so if we can hold that for this week um to finish today then it can probably build and attack the upside at 25 24 25 dollars um but there is quite a lot of resistance up ahead we've got the counter trend line 
then we've also got the 21 day EMA so it might take a little bit of time for Polkadot to kind of build its next move uh, and then move to the upside which is kind of contrary to what's happening with of course the Kazama parachains which is some very bullish news because obviously that leads to Polkadot uh, doing its own auctions uh, parachain auctions so you know when that actually happens um, when Kazama kind of successfully uh, does his auctions and gets you know all the projects online and then moves ahead with Polkadot that's definitely going to be a massive event that'll push it all the way back up um, to $45, $50 and then over to the moon so uh, I didn't mention it before but these are definitely good levels kind of uh, average in so if there's any projects that you're interested in um, definitely use this time to average in some more buys no financial advice though this is unsolicited unprofessional advice you know man, that's, that's, i should put that like on a, on a, a t-shirt or something catchphrase moving on though so kazama is showing some indecisiveness with this candle because you had a massive move to the upside which i had marked the levels for already a long time um and then just move to the downside as well. It's still above the 21 day, a 21 week EMA, um, but this candle is definitely indecisive. It could carry on to the upside um, and then potentially break it, or it could move to the downside because it is a little bit um, below the previous week's close. Uh, it could go below uh, and test that support level at around 317. We need to see what Kazama wants to do in terms of the trade opportunity, this would probably not be a good um, level because it's equal risk and equal reward. You want to see it wait, potentially if it wants to drop down to the lower levels, and that would be a good opportunity. So, again, with the, with the hype that's come out uh, regarding the parachain auctions, you would expect it to move to the upside, um, but crypto a lot of times likes to do things in a contrary fashion. So we want to wait and see what it wants to do. So at the moment, it's at a midpoint. Um, hasn't really decided what it wants to do. Um, but as mentioned, it's already hit the target. So in terms of trade opportunities, target has been hit. So now we want to wait and see what it wants to build. If it wants to drop to the to the bottom or move to the top and potentially break that. Now we have pancake swap. Um, so pancake swap has dropped below a very important resistance level or key level sixteen dollars and some change um which is not good there is major support at, on this counter trend line so it could potentially drop further and further down to this level um the main thing that we want to see for sure is for it to be above this level so so that so as to create a higher low um i keep banging on about this but higher, higher lows is one of the basic fundamental indicators that it's you know in an uptrend or or a downtrend. So um, what we can see though, it's probably from the daily this, these wicks uh, seems to be an important level. You've got two, two wicks over here and one over there. So this is a key level. Um, so we hopefully want to see it build from that. Uh, make sure to use that support to build to the upside. So that would be a key level to look out for. If it drops below, then we'll probably see it hit that trend line at around thirteen dollars. If it holds, then we could potentially see it um, break above 16 and some change and then retest that um, resist that, that high at 18 to $18.50. So again, uh, PackingSwap, one of the most popular exchanges on Binance. Um, great trade opportunity uh, if you get it at these levels uh, all the way and ride it all the way to the top at $40. So this would be a good level. It's, relatively low risk if it drops down further even to the bottom that's 20 20 percent if you look at the upside that's 150 percent so that's a great risk to reward um opportunity <laughs> matic um what can i say about matic it's definitely proven me right i said many many times that this was looking overbought uh, and it's just shy of that level of, um, well, actually, I said in the last video that I'm expecting it to drop down to one, one dollar and eight cents um, to one twenty, 
and it's gotten down to its lowest one um was was the lowest point one sixteen so it hit target I think now would be even though it's, it's gone up quite a bit since then still decent um risk reward uh compared to getting at these highs so these levels are much better to jump in at um than of course up here so if matic is one of your favorite projects then you now now's a good time so major support levels is of course definitely at 108 to 107 if it drops below that it's going to be quite bad quite quite bad it could drop as low as 75 cents and further but i don't think that's going to happen um and support uh, resistance is going to be at 171 towards 187 and two dollars so as i said if this is a project that you're interested in um now is a good time probably to average in so now we're going to have a look at doc um this is uh, one where i don't really know the fundamentals i'll be honest but this is just pure ta which i love to do uh, so this is looking like it's in sort of a limbo um because it's near the top and potentially uh if it breaks this level then it will drop all the way down to 47 or 0.4746 at this level or hit that trend line but at the same time if because it's just come from an uptrend this is kind of a, a neutral candle if it uh, breaks this resistance then it could retest uh, the previous high of 13 cents um, or even higher towards 17 cents so it is at a limbo um, level uh, and if you kind of zoom out you can see that somewhat of a symmetrical triangle although I wouldn't really call it that because there's too many kind of blank spaces in there for it to be a proper symmetrical triangle but you can see it's sort of an uptrend so in terms of trade opportunities um, this potentially I don't think is a good one because it's near the top uh, so there's a lot more risk for it to drop to the bottom than there is reward um, but as I said if it breaks that counter trend line then definitely it can kind of retest that high of 14 to 15 cents and even higher than that 17 to 18 cents so an interesting looking uh, project for sure in terms of TA so next we'll look at um, Singularity Net so it's not looking too good you dare say that to me uh, I'll be honest it's looking a bit dangerous uh, you can see although there's a lot more history on the previous chart uh, this is, these are just two red candles and it hasn't shown any sign of reversal however what I would put in uh, its favor is that this wick is much longer than uh, the wick on top showing a lot of demand for singularity net but until we see a green candle and a reversal and a confirmation you know it could still drop lower and lower to find a bottom so it's not out of the woods just yet uh we need to see more data more of a reversal and a green candle before we can actually kind of say that it's looking to move to the upside on the daily though this is showing definitely more signs of reversal this bottom over here a lot of wicks a lot of demand pushing it up so this could be the lowest point and it's broken below this support which would have been um resistance and now it wants to keep going to the upside what we want to see is um more as you can see these wicks more of an attack of that high but also to reclaim this level as support uh, of 19 cents and then to keep moving to the upside um this is clearly showing that a lot of people are taking profits at this level so it needs to basically uh, um all the bears that are selling it needs to kind of wear them out and then break past this level then i think it's going to clear the way to kind of go back to 26 cents and above towards 35 and 40 cents and, and whatnot so at the moment there's a lot of sell it sell side pressure um but this all these wicks show there's decent demand as well so key thing we want to see is at, um for, for for it to reclaim 19 cents as support and continue moving forwards looking at the total market cap quickly to wrap this up we can see it's finding some support at the 1.5 trillion dollar level uh, it's tested this low of 1.38 to 1.4 trillion which is a good sign um 
we want to see build on top of this creating a higher low and also now that we have this high crate over here we will, and we can see a lot of demand over here we need to see it push break above this and then test this high at 1. uh, 1.7 trillion dollars so at the moment there's a range there's a range between this 1.35 and 1. 1.7 so similar to bitcoin as long as it stays between these two ranges we're good uh, we want to see it build uh, get above this midpoint and then attack that level once we get out of this range we're going to the moon i'm telling you uh, but if we go below this range of course there is danger there is mucho danger uh, if you could but let's just not imagine this and think about positives focus on the positives um but that is the danger uh if if it breaks below that because as you can see there's not much levels there's only a wick showing some demand at this level um so these two levels key levels um to as long as we stay between these two levels then we're good and of course bitcoin is the driver so hence why these levels are as as they are so we will end the video there see you in the next one peace